All right, what is up, Utes fans? This is Joseph back with the Utah Utes Football Digest. Uh, good to have all you guys here tonight. Uh, as you guys come in, please do make sure you like the video. Also, uh, you know, hop into the chat. Today we're going to be breaking down, uh, you know, just the offensive stat predictions when the Utes go into Florida, go into the Swamp, and take on the Gators. Uh, I think a lot of you guys will probably agree with what I have to say. Some of you guys might not. And I think it's definitely going to be player by player if you guys agree or not. So it uh, should be a lot of fun, but it's going to be Utah versus Florida week one in the swamp. Big time matchup. If you guys haven't already um, watched the video I did breaking down the two teams and talking about what Florida is good at, what Utah is good at, the weaknesses of both teams, uh, definitely do that when you get a chance. But that should give you an idea where I'm coming from here. Just to kind of, you know, break it down before we look into the individual stats for the players. Um, Florida is very likely to be a really good team against the pass. That doesn't mean we won't be able to pass against them at all, but they're very likely to be a really good team against the pass. Um, and they're also probably pretty likely to be okay against the run, but nothing special. And a team like ours that really runs the ball well, we should see, you know, some good success there. Lanky boy. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for tuning in. I think it's uh, been a little bit since I've caught you in one of the live streams. So good to, good to have you here, man. And he said, go Utes. Yep, go Utes, baby. Go Utes. <laughs> and uh, with that, let's let's go ahead and take a look at the first player. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun tonight. I'd love for you guys as we go through this, if we can talk about um, – uh, Dakota said there was some Florida YouTubers who were referencing your video breakdown. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. You know, it's funny this week at work. This was the first time this ever happened. But like people, I guess they found the video looking up Utes content and they just like came up to me and they're like, hey, I didn't even know uh, you had a YouTube channel. That's awesome. So that was that was kind of a fun experience for me. That was the first time that that happened without me telling someone about the channel. So that was pretty cool. Um, but anyways, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at the first player. So the first player I've got, you can see the stat line at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we've got Brent Keithy, uh, three catches for 47 yards and one touchdown, two rushes for 16 yards. So in total here, we're looking at about 63 scrimmage yards for Brent Keithy. Brent Keithy's, you know, a really good player for the Utes. A really well-rounded player. I think he's going to be a weapon that Cam Rising is going to look to early and often, you know, to try to get his feet under him, try to get, you know, get moving, get acquainted. Um, and I think it'll work really well. Uh, Brian Keithy, you know, one of the best players on this team. Uh, a really good player. If you guys aren't familiar with Brent Keithy, just to pull up the stat line from last year, uh, or I won't even pull up the stat line from last year, but, you know, uh, a really good player, a well-rounded guy, a guy that can uh, kind of how I see this playing out is I see him being a main weapon for Cam Rising, catching a couple short passes, maybe breaking a tackle or two. Um, and maybe I'm thinking like two of these catches I have listed are like 8 to 10 yards or 8 to 12 yards. And then we get one big 25 to 30-yard catch out of Brent Keithy. You know, he just kind of breaks out on one big play, kind of like that Oregon streak up the middle where he just takes off and just starts ripping through defenders. That's kind of how I see that stat line playing out. And then with the rushing stats for Brent Keithy, two rushes for 16 yards. Kind of what I see here is us using him in the reverse game. I know he's become much more of a receiver, uh, but more than that, we've been using him with wide receiver or tight end reverses, right? So he's definitely a player we like to utilize his athleticism and his skill set. So I, I see him making a big play there. Feel free to let me know what you guys think uh, about Brent Keithy's stats. Um, and we will uh, keep, keep it going here, but... Brent Keith, yeah, I see being one of our big players for this game. I know the total yards isn't wild, but don't forget for a tight end wide receiver hybrid, those are really good numbers. I mean, to put up 47 receiving yards, a touchdown, and two rushes for 16 yards, solid numbers. Okay, so the next guy we've got here is going to be Dalton Kincaid, another tight end, uh, three catches for 40 yards. 
Now, this was a common type of stat line for Dalton Kincaid last year. Uh, three catches for 40 yards. Definitely a solid game, to be fair. I expect Dalton Kincaid to take another step this year. I expect him to be a you know six seven hundred yard kind of guy before the season's over. Uh, one of the reasons I don't see him you know going wild in this game, but still that's a solid game. To be fair, you know that's what thirteen point three yards a catch on three catches. You know that's a couple first downs for the crew. Uh, that that's a solid game. So. To be clear, I think Dalton Kincaid is going to have a solid game, and I think throughout the year he's really going to start lighting it up. Really, guys, the number one thing is this is a really good pass defense. I mean, I can't imagine that it won't be, and I think you're just going to have to maximize the opportunities you get in this passing game this week, and there's not going to be a ton to go around. It's not like we're not going to throw the ball. It's just it's not going to be a lot of throwing. We're going to know that this is a uh, – you know, a really good pass defense, and we're going to do what we can to avoid forcing throws on them if we can. All right, and then the next guy is someone I know a lot of people are really excited for. So this is Devon Vele. Devon Vele, uh, Vele, three catches for 48 yards and one touchdown. Now, there's a lot that kind of goes into this. Um, uh, Lanky Boy says, I feel like our wide receivers will have a big game, in my opinion. You know, honestly, I, I don't think our wide receivers are going to have a bad game, and we're starting to get into those, right? We talked about the tight ends, and we'll talk about the receivers here in a second. Maybe I don't completely agree with you, and it's not about the talent of our wide receivers, Lanky Boy. It's about the talent of this Florida defense. I mean, the Florida defense last year was the number nine pass defense in the country, and Louisiana, which is Billy Napier's old team, they were the number four pass defense in the country. I, I really don't see – many situations where this isn't a really good pass defense so not that i don't think we'll have a good game it's just i think this game it's it's going to be more about how well we run the ball rather it's like how well do we throw the ball in crucial situations can we get those nice you know tight coverage but a slant across the middle for a first down can we make plays when the passing game is called for, but we don't want to wind up leaning heavy on the pass game. Uh, all right. So Devon Bailey, three catches, 48 yards, one touchdown, you know, a big physical receiver and a guy that a ton of Utes fans are really high on. I'm aware of this. I, uh, I'm, you know, reasonably high on him myself. I think one thing, uh, Linky boy says, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I think a lot of fans are really high on Devon Vele. Uh, I'm really high on him too. My only word of caution would be he flashed a lot last year, but let's not put the cart before the horse. Let's let him go out there and prove it, right? He looked good in the spring game. A lot of guys look good in the spring game. It's hard to know if that's going to translate to the to the field this year right away. I'm I'm – pretty confident that by the middle of the season we'll see Devon Bailey definitely take his stride but let's see him hit the field and make plays consistently you know four or five catches a game in in game after game before we start acting like we got a, a number one star receiver on our hands all right so the next guy is a guy that I, I don't know if you want to say I'm low on him I think a lot of people are a little too high on him Solomon Enos two catches for 19 yards this isn't me saying he's a terrible player or anything. I just, with with how hard this team's going to be to throw against and how little of a role uh, Solomon Enos really played in the past game last year, I don't see him being a huge factor in this game. I, but I do think, uh, on a positive note, I think he's a really sure-handed possession receiver. So, you know, when the situation calls for it, We'll throw a dart across the middle on a slant or a curl where he's just sitting in the middle of the field and he has to make that tough catch. I think he'll be able to come up with that. Um, and, you know, I'm sure uh, after this video, I'll get some comments about how, you know, I'm uh, not very high on Solomon Enos. I think it's tough. You know, I think a lot of people are optimistic. I hope he goes out there and kills it. I just, I worry, you know, last year he wasn't a big factor in almost any game. And especially against a really good pass defense like this, I really don't see him lighten up the field. I think two catches for 19 yards is a fair prediction. Okay, 
So this next grouping of players is a, a group of players where any of these guys could be the number three receiver. We won't really know until they hit the field uh, against Florida, but it's Money Parks, Jalen Dixon, and Makai Cope. So first guy, I have them all at one catch for 12 yards. To be clear, one of them could be the clear number one receiver, and it could be three catches for 36 yards, right? However you guys want to look at this, or it could be a mix of two, and one guy gets two catches for 24 yards. It's kind of how I look at it. Um, money parks, really dynamic playmakers. Same with Jalen Dixon. The, you know, these are two really good players. Uh, same with Makai Cope. What you, uh, what you want to see in this game is kind of who becomes the third, the third receiver. I, my money is actually on Makai Cope. Just so you guys know, I, he looked so good in the spring game. I know it was only a couple big plays, but they were like explosive dynamic plays, and the number one thing is that they, you know, Cam Rising wasn't afraid to throw the ball up to the guy. That's a really good sign. If your quarterback trusts you that much, that's a really good sign. Um, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, Lanky Boy says, are you going to the Florida game? I am not going to the Florida game. That sounds awesome. But uh, I am not going to the Florida game. Are you going to the Florida game, Lanky Boy? Let me know in the chat. Um. And then with that, yeah, so Makai Cope's my guy, my guess at who's going to be the third receiver. But like I said, Money Parks and Jalen Dixon have been lighting it up more at camp from what I've heard. So who knows? Maybe they could be the guys uh, to light it up. So that's it for the tight end and receiving weapons. Uh, if you guys are enjoying the video, please do make sure you like the video, uh, help get it out to more fans. Comment below what you guys are thinking so far of the rank of, you know, how I have the stat projections. And if you guys haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. We do Utes content all the time, and especially with the season coming up, uh, it's going to be awesome. So that's awesome. All right. Lanky Boy says, yes, I am. It should be fun. Lanky Boy, you're going to the Florida game. That's awesome, man. Well, good luck to you out there. I know it should get pretty wild, so stay safe, but I'll keep an eye out for you on TV, man. It's really cool. I hope you have fun. <laughs> All right. And now the, the guy a lot of people want to know about, Cam Rising. So like I said, it's not going to be a wild pass game. But either way, I think Cam Rising is going to have a solid game. He is a you know great guy. Dakota says, feeling good about our balance between running backs and receivers. It should open up a lot of options. Yeah. And tight ends. I think that's the biggest factor is the tight ends working in as receivers. Uh, but Dakota, yeah, I'll talk. I'm going to talk about some of the receiving threats we have at running back here in a minute. After we go over Cam Rising, we'll start diving into the running backs. Okay, so Cam Rising, 17 pass or 17 completions for 25 attempts on 223 yards, two touchdowns, three rushes for 24 yards. So just about 247 yards total. Uh, so very good game I'm expecting from Cam Rising. You know, solid just when it's needed, make that pass, you know, and then and then let the receivers go out there and make plays. And then with the rushes, how I see that when when we have a team like this that seems to have a really good pass defense and our obvious way to get to them is the run game, you got to imagine that we're gonna be using our quarterback that really has some wheels you guys know cam rising has is really athletic and can make plays with his feet when the situation calls for it i would imagine we'll see some option plays or at, at bare minimum you know he's going to drop back there the when a play breaks apart because they're going to have you know sec edge rushers he's going to be able to scramble around make a play and get a first down with his feet so i definitely see you know cam rising using his feet to get some plays And like I've been saying, they, they should have a really good pass game. But really what I think our biggest advantage is Cam Rising. Like a bunch of awesome receiving weapons and we have the ability to spread the field. But if they get to him back there, I feel like Cam Rising can scramble out and make plays. He did it against Ohio State. He did it against Oregon. I mean, not to say that – I mean, honestly, I'd put the, those two rosters up against Florida's. Like if you guys want to talk about teams that have good – good players but not good coaching which is kind of where florida's been for a while now oregon definitely falls in that category i mean like 
if you want to know how Cam Rising does against that type of team, go watch the Oregon games. And he smacked Oregon around. All right. Excuse me. Anyways, on to the run game. So the rushing game is going to be where I see our biggest advantage. If you guys agree, please make sure you like the video. I see us really running the ball well on these guys. Comment below what you're thinking of the breakdown so far. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've got a lot of you content coming and, and a lot still to come. So it should be really fun. So the first guy is Tavion Thomas. 19 rushes for 89 rushing yards and two touchdowns. So a couple things there. Yeah. So 19 rushes, it's a solid workload, right? That means he's getting it handed to him quite a bit, especially considering there's other good running backs in this room. Tavion Thomas, physical runner. You get him into that red zone. He's going to make people look bad. He's going to break some tackles. He's going to get into the end zone, right? That's where I see the two touchdowns coming. You know, if you're a U fan, you know who Tavion Thomas is. He's he's an animal. The guy is a, a straight beast. If uh, I'm glad that I don't have to try to tackle him or that, you know, my team, my defense isn't playing against him because that would be very stressful. He's he's a monster. Uh, and it could be even better than this. To be, to be clear, I, I see a rotation in the running back room, especially early on. Uh, but either way, I see Tavion. You know, after being the main guy, that's why he's getting by far the most carries out of all the running backs. And he could do 19 rushing yards or 19 rushes for 145 yards, right? The guy is very explosive. He can make it happen. Basically, how I looked at it is if he could average about 4.7 yards a carry, where would that put him? And that's where we get, you know, 89 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. All right, and then the next guy is going to be Jalen Glover. A lot of guy, a lot of people are really excited about him, especially going into Florida, which is his home state. He should be excited to make an impact. I'm sure he will have a lot of family and friends there from his hometown. I see him going four rushes for 15 yards and one catch for eight yards. So not a over the top game. That's a solid game, right? Just a hair under four yards of carry. This is a really good, talented SEC defense. It could be better uh, stats from him. Uh, boom. Lanky says, I think if we get Tavion Thomas going early, we will be hard to stop, and that will set up the pass. I absolutely agree, man. The trick is going to be when we're forced to pass, right? When, when we get that third and five where it's obvious we shouldn't be running or third and six. Can Cam Rising step back and make the throw? I absolutely believe in him. I and if and if it gets bad, he'll he'll step up in the pocket and and run around scramble. Um, Dakota is so excited to see his progress this year, comparing last year's beginning to end. Um, I are you talking about Jalen Glover, Dakota? If you could clarify that. But anyway, so Jalen Glover, four rushes, fifteen yards, one catch for eight yards. You know, I think the kid's going to want to make an impact. Hopefully, he just doesn't make any silly mistakes. And I think he's going to, you know, he's going to get his feet wet a little bit. This is a great first game for him, right? Just don't don't put the ball on the ground. Just get the carries, you know, maybe get a first down when we can. But, you know, and, and I see him getting a nice little catch there for eight yards. So that'll be nice. And then we've got Makai Bernard, four rushes for 18 yards. So just over four yards of carry. Tavion Dakota. All right, so Makai Bernard, four rushes for 18 yards, two catches for 24 yards. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is haha. All right, so I see Makai Bernard really having a nice game. You know, Makai Bernard's incorporate more in our game this year. It just, you know, it, 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 when they come up to bite on the run game and he's able to turn it into a little dump off, it's, you know, it, it seems to work really well. It was something I wanted us to use a little more last year, but I was, uh, but I really hope to see him more this year because I felt like that there was something special about Makai. And, you know, when that flat really starts working, you can start incorporating him into some wheel routes and stuff like that. Um, but that is that. So that is how I see it going. So in totality, 223 passing yards. I've got us with, let me get a calculator here. All right. So Cam Rising, 24 yards. Avion Thomas, 89 yards. Jalen Glover, 15. And Makai Bernard, 15. And Brent Keefe, 162. 
So 162 rushing yards and 223 passing yards. That would put us at 385 yards total. Should be an awesome combo there. And personally, I think that's going to be enough to get it done. I think we, you know, get ahead at some point in the third quarter. And then it's just going to be, if they sell out to stop the run, can we continue to run? And if they are able to get us in situations where we're trying to run the clock down and we have to pass, are we going to be able to pass? So. That's kind of uh, the main question. <laughs> but outside of that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like the video. It goes a long way. Uh, comment below uh, what you guys think of the stat breakdown. And please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, we, we do a lot of Utah Utes content. So excited to have you guys on here. Outside of that, though, I am out of here. Have a great night. College football tomorrow should be a lot of fun. We got week zero. We got Utah State. We got Nebraska and Northwestern, UConn. So should be a lot of fun. Make sure you guys tune in, and uh, I will see you guys next week for uh, the Utah-Florida game. Should be pretty awesome. Hey, thanks, Linky. Have a good one, guys.